traveling party. I was on a girls' book distributing party in the summer of 76, and we were following Srila Prabhupada around to a lot of different temples. And um, one of the things we got to do was go to the New York Rathiatra, where Srila Prabhupada was. It was his first Rathiatra that he came to. And at, at the end, when we were at the end of the parade, Kirtananda was whisking him away, you know, and nobody saw it. And I saw it with another girl, so I kind of nudged her and I said, Prabhu, look, there goes Prabhupada. Oh my gosh, he's all alone with Kirtananda. So we went running over to the limo. And we got right next to the limo and the Kirtan party was coming and we were chanting and dancing right next to Prabhupada. Haribo, Haribo. And Prabhupada kind of made a motion with his garland like he was going to take one off. And I said, oh, Jai, Srila Prabhupada, I'll take your garland. <laughs> and... Um, he ended up smiling at me real big. He had a big twinkle in his eye, and he ended up taking his garland off, and he leaned over Kirtananda, and he handed it to me out of the window. And it was just in time because all the senior men were going to be there in like two seconds, and I knew I'd get knocked out of the way. So to make this story a little of the background knowledge for it was that the summer before that Rathiatra, I was in a really bad car accident with three other Sankirtan girls. And by the side of the car, my head was off. I mean, I had sustained really massive injuries. None of us really should have lived through it. We ended up in intensive care a long time. So to maintain any spiritual consciousness, and I wasn't initiated yet, and I was trying to chant, but it was almost physically impossible. I went through all the fields and meadows of New Vrindavan, picking all the wildflowers that I used to pick for Prabhupada to make his garlands when I was back at New Vrindavan. So it really made it meaningful to me that when he handed me his garland, he knew what I was trying to remember at the time of death, what I thought was going to be the time of death, and I was only 20-something years old then. So it was very meaningful to me that Prabhupada had, had made, because as soon as I started doing that, I became very calm, even though everybody around me was telling me I was dead. <laughs> so... Um, it, it was very meaningful when Prabhupada handed me his garland with a twinkle in his eye. I just felt like he knew. The third part of the story, which was really significant to me, is later on, six months later, I was um, out for the Christmas marathon, and I just happened to call home. I went talking to a couple of college friends. I called a friend of mine who is now an airline stewardess, and she said, oh, I had that guru of yours on a flight. She was a cross-country stewardess. And she said, I asked him about you, and I was like, oh my gosh, Vicki, what did you do? And she told me she knew he was a special person to me. So when she had him on a flight, she kept going up to him, asking him if he needed water, if he needed 7-Up. It got to be the end of the flight, and she couldn't hold back anymore. And she said, um, you know, my, I have a good friend of mine, and she's at that farm of yours in West Virginia, and she's just been in a horrible car accident, and we want to know, I'd like to know if, She's all right. Are they taking care of her? And she thought maybe he wasn't going to answer. He just looked out the window for a minute. And then he turned around and said to her, I am aware of it. Krishna is aware of it. And she will be fine. And I was just like, oh, Vicky, you're such an airhead. This happened six months ago and you didn't tell me. Prabhupada knows who I am. Krishna knows who I am. I was just like dancing in the airport by now, you know. I was just like so ecstatic, you know, to hear that story. So it just kind of confirmed what I thought.